gives a nice sort of feel. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to do all, all three, just like a sort of sap green or a kind of mid, mid green color. They're actually quite dark, so I'm going to be going in darker later on. Um, I think with trees, it's it, it's it does help to adjust your brush stroke depending on what um what the tree is. So I'm literally just quite sort of simple brush strokes. Are you going up? Yes. Yeah. Hi, come again. No, that's your brush <laughs> brushing upwards. Brushing upwards, yeah, that's right. And that's quite well. So I'm just going to let that dry a little bit. But actually, while I'm at it, I've got the sap green here. I'm going to have a little bit of sap green and a little bit of cadmium yellow. So I've kind of, I've sort of oh, got a bright yellow and middle green. I'm just going to mix in those. That's the uh, some greeny looking cadmium yellow, just to make a kind of lemony yellow. In fact, what I'm going to do is is if you look at this tree. If you've got the, the printout in front of you, it's quite sort of slightly more um, lime green, sort of a yellowy green. So I'm actually going to put this same sort of technique. It's a little bit rougher. And um, that kind of up and down style. I'm going to just put that in, maybe a little, just maybe some yellow mixed in there. And eventually we'll put a, a darker, tone on here as well. But what I'll do as well is just mention that. There we are. So this is just a slight variation on that sap green. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a little, uh, here we'll start it up here. So this is the one end of the scale. We've got quite a, a sort of bright yellow, a bright green. And in the middle, the next one along is probably going to be the like a sap, sap green. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the, the trusty hooker's green or this kind of dark bluey green just to put some nice dark notes. It's still a little bit damp, but that it's quite nice. It just sort of Blends in with the with the existing green quite nicely there. Okay, got this up green. Um, and then and again there, just to sort of yeah, the the, the dark emphasising the dark on the. Perhaps on that on that left hand side, and we're trying to. Oops! I'm just going to uh, catch with a kind of dry brush. Just catch the drips before they set off down the page, and then same again. No, just like that. It's a kind of just. A little bit smoother than this tree, which I think is a yew tree. So there we go. I mean, it, it's it's worth just kind of. It, sometimes it's nice just to do this as a little little exercise, because you can try out letting it dry a bit more or putting the darker paint on when it's still wet. You can see the kind of difference of the effect there. It's, it was a little bit drier here, and it's it's already quite a nice. It's got a bit a bit more texture. This is a bit smoother here. Um, let's put this, I'll put that there, just a little square of colour, because at some point we'll probably have something between the two, which is like a little, uh, just a little bit of sap green and hooker's green mixed together. As you can see, you start to get a nice range of greens developing. Um, so while we're at that, we can start putting a bit of um, perhaps the hookers and the sap green mixed together. Now this is slightly 
different sort of texture, isn't it? It's got a bit more of a dabbly effect, for want of a better word. I'm just going to put a little bit of... So once again, roughly lighter on that side and darker on this side. We're going to put some very dark in on, on the one side. Um, just going to clean, clean the brush out, give it a dab. It's quite handy for just sort of smudging things around there. I just start, so it's a slightly different brush technique, giving a slightly more textured feel. And I think what I'll do, I'll just add a little bit of, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of ultramarine, or like quite a deep, a deep blue to the hooker's green, and then we'll get like a, an even, an even darker one. I'll, I'll annotate this up and, and send you a copy. Um, so now that's an even, even dark one, and you get really quite a very deep, uh, a very sort of deep bluey green, just with three colours, and that would be quite good for. It's a, let's try a bit on here. It's, it's almost still a little bit wet, but if you want that really sort of sunny, sunny day effect. That's quite a nice way of uh, doing it. Often a little bit darker down the bottom. There we go. It's just a very subtle difference. I mean, um, you know, this it, it just isn't sort of um, a, a tree encyclopedia technique. But it's perhaps a little bit more detailed than you would do in an actual painting. But uh, like I said, it's good, a good exercise to do. And that's now with that very rich sort of bluey and greeny mix. I'm going to put put that in really quite strongly around the around the edge. So it's it's slightly kind of random profile here, but it's almost from the photograph I'm looking at. It's almost quite yeah silhouette almost over there. I'm just going to kind of dab that sort of random. You want to kind of keep it random, really. If you start doing it sort of Christmas tree lights, it's, it does look a little bit peculiar. It's almost going like that. I'm just going to put a bit more down here. Um, rinse the brush out. And then uh, put that around a little bit here and there. I can't quite see what I'm doing. Is that, um, is that making sense? Yes. yes. Absolutely. There we are. Good. And you can sort of play around with that. Um, but we're trying to keep the light light and the dark dark. And just kind of stand back. Yeah, it's a, so it's a slightly more textured feel than the, the ones here. Um, we could just <laughs> whip through with the same green throughout. Um, but in fact, what I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of, um, just for fun, I've got a little bit of Payne's Grey with a little bit of magenta, just a little bit of kind of sort of shadow in the picture. Just literally got um, uh, this, this kind of colour, I think. So it's like a slightly warmer grey. I'm, I'm just going to sort of, just to make it look like a nice little scene, just literally from the base. You know, you can imagine that, that would be a shadow. It actually just, just ties it quite nicely onto your, um, onto your page as well. That's an added bonus and not compulsory. But I'm just uh, a little bit under there though. With, uh, with, with kind of shadows, okay, this is just a, a, a kind of sketch, but it's always good to have a certain continuity in, in the shadows. In fact, while I've got that mixed up, if you look at the, the, the plane trees on the road, um, the, down here, look, they've got uh, very much that kind of 
strong shadow running across the road that that really can make a picture or break it um, i probably said it a thousand times before but I'll, there's a painting we often do of, of one of these avenues of plane trees and if you look let me just take it off um if you look down let me just see if, I can, if you can see that yeah um mm -hmm. Vertical trees, lovely, sunny day, uh, and all these shadows are running pretty horizontal across the road. What people tend to do is just do like diagonal lines, and it destroys it. It really does help to have a, a strong horizontal line to emphasize the road, really, more than anything else. Bear that in mind when uh, you're next painting an avenue of plane trees. Um, actually, while we've got the the grey, I've got a little paint, paint's grey. I'm going to mix a little, just uh, I don't know, cerulean blue perhaps into the grey. Um, this is going to give this sort of uh, that kind of tone there. I just want to put a little bit of um, shadow on these tree trunks. It's almost like the first wave. So if I, so it's always good to have a little scrap of paper. Yeah. Um, I'll come around the back of the camera and if you look it's it's almost just like up that side and there's a few little kind of what's, what's nice about the that's almost a little bit too strong I'm just going to water that down a little bit um, I'm just going to kind of go up there if you, we're going to put some more texture in there later but at this stage it's like a sort of mid grey just to hint at some sort of shadows. And like I said, they've got this, it's almost a kind of dappled, it's the sort of reflection or the shadow off the leaves. That can come there. Try that. Um, and then we're gonna come perhaps down there. So we're just kind of keeping one side sunny and one side Slightly, uh, slightly overcast. This is just a little random sketch. I won't do all the leaves, but I'll do some. But we can be um, letting that dry. There we go. That's kind of got that. It'll be, uh, it'll mean more once we've um, started drawing in. It's, it's always nice to leave a little bit of light onto the scene. I mean, actually, if you look at the picture, it's quite nice. There's, there's a kind of green. Bang. In fact, I'll, I'll just paint them in just to show you um, what you can do. See if you've got that. Imagine there's um, this little vineyard, or a little orchard on one side. Um, by painting that kind of there, it, it kind of, it's almost like a negative painting. You're kind of leaving that white, and then that, that comes in there. So I'm just using the just splashing this isn't this isn't really relevant but it's just showing the let's why not let's put a bit of road in so just by having that little white or the bare paper it just helps to make that stand out yeah, you see what i mean um so and so i'll let that dry before i put those leaves on in fact, what we can do now is um, mix up a little bit of um, uh, burnt, I think it's a kind of burnt umber, like sort of brownie, we want a kind of brownie gray mix. So um, we're talking just perhaps with a little bit of, we're looking, mixing up, it's got a light tree trunk color for this little chap down uh -huh. here. Wrong. I mean, though that would make a, I don't know if you've got the picture in front of you, but they it'd make a wonderful painting on its own. There's so much detail in this. So I'm literally, what have we got here? We've got this sort of, that's probably a little bit dark. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre to it. And um, that's probably better. Yeah, so I'm just going to put like a light Just that on that tree trunk. I'm just going to put some brush strokes 
Once again, it's always good to paint upwards with a more natural feel. We're going to come back in there later on with some more branches and things. So, and I'll, I'll let that dry and then I'll come in with a, a slightly darker one. In fact, while we're here, there's, um, we can just put some colour in this one here. This is a Mediterranean so umbrella pine, very common in this area. And that's the key thing to watch for. It is very much that kind of canopy of, of pine needles. There's a thousand branches. It might be worth even using a slightly smaller brush. I'm just trying to kind of, you know, I haven't got to stick exactly to the shape, but what you don't want to do is, like I did there, just have a, an extra thick branch to eye up. So there we go. That's, that's got it. So we'll come back in and add some shape, but quite often it's just nice to get a little bit of lighter tone in first and then you can go in darker. Um, while I'm at it, it's funny with this, like, so I can't, I can't really hear you speak, which is going to be a little bit difficult. And you have to um, speak up as though I'm going a bit deaf. I'm just going to put, a, like we've put a little bit of shadow in there, just for fun. I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow behind there. I mean, it probably would, it would be quite a big shape. In fact, I think in the photograph, the shadows come forward, but we're doing it like that. And then um, maybe just hint. I mean, there'll be a huge shadow here, but I'm just, sometimes it's just nice to have a little, you know, just a hint of the shadow like that. So I'll let that, uh, let that dry. And let's see if we can get any, any words out of you. So everyone's, oh, we seem to have lost um, Robin. Hello, Robin, are you there? Oh, oh okay. Oh, hello, bloody battery. Hold on. Hello, battery. I'll plug in. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, oh, me. God, technology is just a nightmare. <laughs> well. <laughs> Plugging in. <laughs> I thought I had everything. <laughs> well, as long as you've got um, watercolour. Let's see if that's muted. Right. If, if, I, if I speak when I'm sat down here. Sorry, I, I was just doing a little check up on Zoom, and um, there's apparently a button you can press which says enhance oh, okay. your get rid of that sort of slightly tired look or blemishes and I nearly pressed it but Monica said it takes up too much, um, too much bandwidth and uh, gets complicated. We have enough complication already without uh, added complication. Um, but is that, uh, is that working okay for everybody? Very good. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm kind of just doing that with the, uh, if I just play with my volume on here, I can just about hear you. Yeah, when you speak, I can hear you, that's fine. Okay. What we can do now then is continue. Everybody at a good point, we can um, uh, just get that and start to put some leaves in. I think once again, it's that. We're still going to mid, mid green tone. So that's a little bit of a, if you look at your, um, the, 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 the plane tree, once again, very much the sunlight and sunlight leaves, leaves and the darker leaves. So I'm perhaps going to have a sap green with a little bit of that cadmium yellow mix. Uh, there are other greens available, but this might just work for now. So um, it's quite sort of random. Let me come around here. I can hardly... This is that kind of... Um, technique so it's a bit more sort of random brush strokes and we're slowly going to build that up 
it's quite nice just i won't bother doing all of it but it's just to give just to give you an idea i mean it's quite nice to literally have a that kind of feel and then you get a few more little leaves coming down kind of concentrate on the middle with a few little gaps through to the sky beyond and that's gives you that i'm gonna sort of freshen a bit more sap green there Like I said, it's quite, with these trees, it's, it's nice, what would be nice if you've got a sort of rich blue sky shining through the, through the trees. And that's okay. Coming in to build that in. I mean, you can be here for, for hours and hours doing these. And what I'm going to do is just have a little, a little bit more of this. I would suggest this, this kind of tree in the background. You're almost kind of dabbing the, the shape of the leaves. Um, especially when you're coming just out of the picture a little bit. And what we'll do, it's quite tricky doing a whole row to give the illusion of leaves, but, but kind of base. what happens is you tend to have, um, let me just hold this over there. What you tend to get, yeah. You get that sort of kind of goes basically darker in the distance. You have these kind of white trunks, tree trunks, and then darker down there, and then lighter where it's, the sun's catching it. So it's it does help this kind of light and shade thing to keep aware of that. Take your time to see where it's dark, where it's light. So you you can see this on this side of the road, the trees are hanging in there. They're a bit lighter, and on this side they're a bit darker. So that just helps to to give that illusion of distance. Bit of a change for another day. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got a bit more dark green. Simon? Yeah? Simon, can you hear me? I can just about hear you. Um, I don't know why my sound isn't any good, but um, I must uh, use much more water than you because when I go back over it, um, it just runs. Okay. Yeah, okay. maybe that's, that's also something to try out. That if, it, if it's a bit too watery, yeah, it'll, it'll kind of um, blend into each other. I mean, that's quite a nice effect. Um, at, at this point, the, the paint can be you know, relatively thick. And then especially if you come down here, look, um, as we start to to the brush, some of the leaves in the in the darker cone. I've, I've already got quite a strong strong mix of them up here. It's it is about it is very much about you know, letting stuff dry because it will um, it does kind of run into each other if, if you don't. So this is like just a, um, so you can see the that's better. So now you can see this, this tree is kind of standing away from that one. Um, yes, some of the colors will mix, mix here, but you want to kind of just keep in the, the gaps and so on. And then over here, there's maybe some darker ones. It's not quite, it's, it's not quite a fresh enough green really, but just it's really to show you the, the principle. So we've got that sort of, uh, Basically, the lighter side than the darker side, and it's it's always going to just have a few little branches sticking down, and then uh, possibly back. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. Experiment with the with the thickness of the paint. If you if you I've used used a slightly smaller brush now, and especially with the leaves, it's it's good to um, you know thicken the paint. So uh, you you're almost painting that on like. That close. It'd be more obvious if it was a if it was a bluer sky, but you can go on, add infinitum. You're know, adding um, all the way over here, and it's that sort of subtle blend of of these kind of greens. You know, the lighter greens through to the darker greens, just keeping in mind the where your sun's coming from. Um, so, is that is that me? Making any sense? Yes, ab absolutely. 
Yep. And I'm guessing the, in, the intensity of the colour fades in the distance. Yes, that's right. Um, and also, Simon, we're just doing the bottom of the tree where it's, uh, we're dabbing. Now, the rest of the tree, is there any point of the tree where you just kind of let it all run together and you're not dabbing? Um, I think you can do that. Let me just pause this. I think you can do that. Um, yeah, if you're doing a whole row, we should find the um, the painting. <laughs> I've got a, I've done this scene uh, a thousand times, but yeah, you would. It would be much looser into the distance. You know, it would just sort of uh, be the colours blending together, light and dark. Um, it's it's quite good to have this. Um, let me just see if I can quickly think where that might be. I mean that uh, big tree. I mean, the, I mean, um, but it's like a um, big tree. Yeah, yeah. in the, the foreground, top. has a little bit of clarity to the the structure. Some you know, more detailed leaf work. But in the background, let me well, let me, let me just see how I would do it. You can probably um, yeah, kind of medium sized brush, and in the background, yeah, you could probably just let's have a, imagine that we've got a whole whole row of trees here. Um, this may or may not work. I'm just going to literally put a few. I'm going to come, come down there. You know, I'd probably do something a bit more vague in the, in the distance. That kind of. Uh, well, well I'm to say at this, uh, at this I'm, scale, really, maybe it would go a little bit darker there. I'm really talking about the top of the big tree because we're oh, only. Top we of the big tree. Yeah, I think um, I think I would um, I would continue with the um, you know the the same kind of strokes. I mean. Uh, if yeah, you know, you can you can keep it a bit looser, um, but I think every now and again you put some darker, more finished pieces in. Okay. Uh, we kind of keeping we want to keep a few little gaps. Uh, like I said it's got a little bit looser now around here, um, and then yeah, I think I tend I would tend to be a little bit more specific. Um, with the tree that was nearer the foreground, because I wanted to keep it um, relatively uh, clear. I'll, I'll find the painting that I've done before and send that through. But basically, yeah, you would kind of continue this sort of technique just to keep it kind of sharp and clear. Otherwise, it does tend to to blur in together. I think this is how I've been. I think so. Once again, just got a random. Make sure the, the shape is a little random on the outside. We've got a few little branches sticking out here and there. You see, you might even have a, you know, you'd have a, a few little. I've done this with a paint. You could try with a brush. Um, just sort of uh, adds a few little leaves in. And you can kind of see that. Yeah, this is the basically the darker side, and that's um, lighter up there. But just try this out. I mean, like I said, I'm sure you'd if you painted these trees, you know, ten times, they'd all be slightly different. But each for me, each time to simplify it, it is uh, a carefully drawn tree trunk, and then bear in mind keeping that sort of openness through the leaves lighter and darker and then repeat ad infinitum into the distance. Um, with regard in the, the the tree trunk there's actually this amazing kind of pattern they have so I often just, just draw that in so a little sort of almost like a little tattoo. And then they can with a slightly darker, slightly finer brush and with some paints grey. You know, you just kind of, um, it's almost like they've spilled paint down there. Really quite, quite amazing trunks actually.
Um, good to, yeah, mix, mix the density of the gray. Now and again, it's just this kind of quite bizarre panning. I mean, it basically is like a, an outer skin of bark. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but um, a year or so ago, they, they were really quite covered. All the trunks, as far as you can see, the trees were quite solidly covered in this bark. And then one day, all the bark fell off. It was almost like within a few days, all the bark had been shed, but it wasn't just one road or one tree. It was the whole area. It was really quite bizarre that you could drive through these avenues and there'd be bits of bark falling off. It was like quite fascinating to see nature at work, you know, the whole area on the same kind of couple of days. It was uh, amazing. But yeah, so I'm just sort of adding a little bit of, uh, I could perhaps add a bit more, a bit more shadow, a bit of bluey grey here. Once you get, if you look, to get um, just a few extra bits of shadow here and there. Maybe down the back here as well. And so it goes on. So it's almost like a formula. A pencil drawing first, some mid grey just to get the tone. Then these kind of uh, almost like these markings. And then uh, just a little bit of extra shadow. Just a sort of clean brush just to soften that in here and there. That's quite nice. Just so, yeah. So, that is, is that helped? Um, yeah. Has that helped? Um, a little bit with the with the trees. Very much so. Okay. We'll have a little uh, top of coffee. So actually, that gives you a little taste of what's happening here. The range of greens. Uh, we'll come to the olive tree last of all, but while you've got those greens, I think once again, but you want a slight kind of yellowy green. I've sort of gone fresh yellow. I'm going to have a look at this um, this pine here. Though once again, this is sort of light with darker underneath. Um, I'm going to just with almost this kind of the brush on a on an angle. It's like almost like a a broccoli. You just want to kind of at this point you want to try and keep it light. It's always easy to add the dark, but it's without mixing opaque colours to give you the lights back again. It's, it's difficult. What color? I tend to try and start what quite color? light tones. Yep. What colours are you using? Uh, this is um, this is a sap green with the like, almost this end here. Look, um, sap green and the, the uh, cadmium yellow. It just sort of you can kind of expect. I'm um, basically I'm just trying to get like a fresh, uh, fresher green colour, and then. Now I'm just going to add a bit more, slightly richer sap green as we come down. Yeah, so once it, it's still this kind of, this kind of brush, brush strokes, slightly kind of, uh, how we describe it? So rather than the kind of dabby technique of here, or the even difference here, it's, it's, it is really a case of, to capture the the feel of a tree, I think you just do need to experiment a little bit and adjust your your brush strokes where you can. Leave a few little gaps, and now I'm going to go in a little bit darker. It's, it's kind of dark, literally just under 
underneath. Let's just try that. As I said, you can add a little bit of, you can add more darks a little bit later if need be. Um, this is still quite damp, it's quite nice. Just kind of coming down a bit darker here. And there's really quite a kind of um, a labyrinth of, of branches, which I would, at this area, I might just actually, I would probably just draw them in with a, with a fine, a fine brush, a fine brush. Um, so once again, try, yeah, remember they've got that nice sort of show. I mean, these are huge trees. This is not to be compared. This is not drawn to scale, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, a relatively small olive tree, and this is, you know, several, several meters high. But it's, it's just the way it uh, fitted on the page, you know. It's just a damp brush just to kind of smudge that. What you don't want to do is put water straight onto the picture. It just reacts badly. How's that? Um, so while that's while that's drying, I might sort of uh, sort of come back to that and uh, have a look at it. These have dried out quite nicely. Like that. Yeah. Um, we've got some quite strong shadows underneath, so I'm going to use just a slightly smaller brush. Where's it? And I'm going to mix perhaps just the, the dark, the, the burnt umber, so like a dark brown, and add a, a little bit of paint grey just to intensify the tone. If you look in these, you know, that quite strong shadow, and that really just has helps to give it a that kind of hot Mediterranean afternoon feel which is what we're not having today because it's it's a little bit cool and blustery here today I don't know how things are where you are I hear the English summer is over and um, I suppose the Australian winter is is setting in so yeah quite, quite a small brush is that is that kind of clear enough Smooth it over a little bit. Um, I kind of want to just, it'd be rare to do a painting this, this small actually, but I'm going to get a very, uh, what's, what kind of makes it are these, just a random little, little brushes, little strokes here and there. But you want a very fine brush because if you go there too, too heavy, it kind of destroys the, the subtlety of all these branches. Let's just have a few, few more. Actually, you know, this, yeah, this isn't exactly photographic, but I'm just trying to get that sort of fine. There's obviously a lot of old dead branches here. It's nice to try and capture that feeling. They smell so good as well. So you can see, I don't want to put everything in, but try and just keep it a little bit random. And there's a few. Often have, uh, yeah, they often have them just sort of sticking out. There we go. So that's sort of, yeah, just not too bad. That's got to give an idea. I mean, you can go on and on, adding details there. We might, I might put a little bit more dark in there. But sometimes, actually, that's a contradiction of styles there, really, because the, the leaf or the foliage is, is relatively loose. But this is obviously very tight, so you might, in that way, need to tighten that up a little bit to kind of tie it all in together. But let me do that slightly. We've got some 
perhaps something like one of these kind of really deep, deep greens now. There's actually most of it's in sunlight on this particular picture, but I'm just going to perhaps, yeah, I'm sort of by doing this quite detailed underneath, it kind of ties in the style. You don't need to, to do this. In fact, to be honest, generally I would um, recommend, not recommend it at all because it can become a huge task. Just here and there. What you don't want to do is find yourself drawing every, um, every pine needle with a damp brush. Okay, I think that's all right. There we are. Yes. The temptation is to now put it a bit darker in there, but it can all run away, it can all run away. Let's go to, back to the olive tree. I'm gonna put a little bit of, not quite as dark as that, but a little bit darker than that. Let's see what I can mix up. I said, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'll sort of annotate. What have we got? Oh, that's a little bit dark. Yeah, so this is um, a bit of burnt umber and yellow ochre, but slightly more burnt umber. And I'm going to just, I don't know, that's probably a little bit, I think it's a bit strong. So I'm going to add a little bit, of, bit more water to the mix. What I want to do is kind of have that lovely uh, shaping they have on the actual trunk, especially the old ones. So once again, you probably find it's best to not have the paint too, too thin, not too watery. As you get into the details, you can afford to mix the paint a little bit stronger. And then, uh, you know, it's almost like you're working with a, a felt pin and just adding some, some details. That's got a little bit, uh, bit more like I might put a little bit of just a wash of something down that side to give it a bit more shape. But then the tricky thing then is actually matching um, a kind of an olive green colour. And I was trying things out yesterday. And basically, I think what, what you need is this, is the trusty sap green with a little bit of cerulean blue. That will give you a nice, quite a sort of bluey green mix. I'll just show you. Let's a bit more paint up. Tissue paper. Where would we be with anything? Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put some here. I kind of got, this is a sort of sap green and cerulean blue. And to be honest, it's, we've got a, a tree outside the window here and there's so many different greens going on. But it is a slightly bluier green. I don't know if those are showing up. No, maybe even a, a little bit of, Bit of water to the mix, make it a bit lighter. But I'm, I'm, I'm really tempted to add white. In fact, the next picture we do, I'm going to paint the trees and add some white. But that's quite good. That's sap green and cerulean blue. And then eventually I've found the mix. I've just had a little bit of water, so it's quite thin. I'm just going to literally put this as a kind of mid-tone on. Let's keep it quite loose, try this one a bit looser. Um, a few little gaps here and there. A bit more water. So this just kind of gets you the, the basic kind of colour. I had to have drawn the shape out roughly, leaving a few gaps here and there. This is quite, quite watery. 
just to get that colour. Once again, it's, it's, it's somewhere between these two stars. It's it's a little bit um, individual leaves and some softer brush strokes as well. The I mean the the olive trees tend to be yeah quite random edged. The photograph isn't too bad for that. Come down a bit further. That's yeah, that's not too bad. And actually, I I don't I want to let that dry a little bit before um adding a slightly darker tone. So if you can kind of see that kind of mix, then we'll try a little bit darker uh, here and there. I mean, the, the photograph. I think the photograph it makes it look too green. But um, try that out. <laughs> More coffee. Let's try the volume. How, how are you getting on? Okay. Yeah, fine. Thanks, Simon. Okay. That's good. This is good. A good little exercise, hopefully. Yes, very much. Try and do this every week, where we do just a little bit of a little sample page like this, and then we use what we've learned in the in this exercise in the bigger picture. Yeah, I never That's could. Anything do can happen. I never could do those cypress trees, so now I know. I know how. Sorry, Mel. Sorry, Mel. Try again. I said I never could do those cypress trees, so now I know. Oh, how. great. Okay, well, there we are. That's the result. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, right, I'm, I'm going to stay with these kind of colours, sap green and cerulean blue, just a slightly more, what have we got? Let's try this one. Um, yeah, that's, so this is a slightly stronger mix of the paint. Uh, like I said, if in doubt, just try it out on a, a scrap of paper first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Otherwise, it can go horribly wrong. But what we want is just we just want to give the the impression there. I think you can, like as you were saying, you know, you can. There is danger you go on and on with a whole range of things. <laughs> What's that mean? Are Are you dabbing? The dog, the dog's gone mad. Are you hear that in the background? Just are you sort of dabbing, dabbing again? Hey, what's up? Yeah, just going to put that in. Quiet, please. This is the workroom. Sorry. Come in, let's go to the kitchen. Let's have, uh, keep it a bit light on that side and darker down here again. That's quite nice. Just uh, you want to just sort of try and keep a, a lightness to the tree. And bring in some. They are tricky. It was good. To, it was a good little exercise to do because, as you can see, you it's easy to go too far, and sometimes it's not. It's not easy to. Give the impression of where the sunlight is coming from. Um, so I have to kind of bear that in mind all the time. Let's go a little bit darker down here. I've kind of got one eye out of the window. There's a little bit of kind of grey in there actually as well. But hopefully with um, the, the colour is quite good. So. Um, I think that's been a, a good call. Let's just come down here a little bit more random. I just it's um kind of losing the the light and shade thing, but um I might just put a little bit 
bit more down here and see if we can pull that back. Let's say this is a little bit darker down here. So there is a danger then of, of kind of going too far. It looks a little bit too pruned. And that's, I think I'm, excuse me, stop, stop there. Re in reality, the, I think the, the actual ball of the tree, if that's the word, the actual foliage would have been bigger than that compared to the size of the trunk. They tend to be a bit more, a bit higher. I'm looking at the drawing. I think I've done that a bit too big. Um, what we can do is take that kind of uh, that uh, grey brown mix and just add a few little extra shadows in there just to sort of emphasise the what's happening inside the tree where it would tend to be darkest. Uh, suggest a few little branches here and there. Yeah, I think, yeah, they, it's, it's a little bit kind of blobby, you know, it would have been better to have it a bit further out, but that's some, some uh, just a few more markings here and there. They're often, they're quite sort of rooty, quite ro rooty. Quite sort of a marked down here, more texture. Okay, yeah, so difference in the trunks as well. Good, okay. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll copy this and um, you know, this is the Friday and um, send that, I'll annotate it up and which sort of colours we're using there and everything and send you a copy of that or make that accessible and um, is, that, is that all okay? Is that sort of uh, uh, looking good? Let's have a look and see if thank you. Um, oh yes, that looks good. We'll just change the gallery view. Oh, yeah, so there's a nice mix there. Great. Oh, yeah. Got the shapes. Well, that's it. Doing perfectly, yeah. Oh, and a little bonus picture on the... Uh, <laughs> that, yes. Uh, that's a good idea. I've used...